Hola amigos, it's Dion here. Welcome to today's class, which is focused on Wild Thing. So what is Wild Thing? Wild Thing is a front body opener and a back body strengthener. And it really requires a lot of coordination as we're turning our feet around, we're flipping our body upside down and reaching and only supporting our upper body with just one hand. So it can sound quite complex, but when we break it down, it is actually quite a lovely pose to go into and quite liberating as well. So I won't keep you any longer. I'll see you on the mat in a moment. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another class. We are starting in a comfortable seat today. So cross your shins or you can put one foot in front of the other. Bring your hands anywhere along the legs that's comfortable for you and close your eyes. Taking the first moments to really check in with your body and feeling your body in contact with the ground and noticing how your spine is holding your chest up, looping the shoulders back and down, relaxing the arms, relaxing the fingers, softening the jaw and relaxing the forehead. Watching the breath as it flows in and out of the nose. So we will be working towards Wild Thing. And it is quite a challenging pose, but we'll be breaking it down throughout class. And to know that whether or not we get to express Wild Thing, the pose is just a signpost, right? It's not the destination. We're using the poses, our body and the breath to train the mind to be present and focused. With that in mind, let's set an intention for this practice. So we'll move through this practice in an organically optimal way for the body. And we are patient with the body and we won't be forcing anything upon ourselves that might cause injury and sensations of discomfort. From here, let's start to connect to our ujjayi breath, which is a gentle constriction in the back of the throat and it produces an oceanic sounding breath. Victorious breath is what it translates to. So slowly open your eyes. And wild thing, if you haven't done it before, is a back bend or a front body opener. We'll also be going upside down in it. So if you have sensations of feeling dizzy, that's perfectly normal. And if it does get a bit overwhelming, then please just sit back, sit back down and try to just breathe deep. Maybe watch me on the screen as a visual guide first before trying to attempt again. And also, I think we'll be moving this through this practice at quite a swift pace. So keep practicing and don't worry if you're not following with my pace. Uh, there's only so much I can jam pack into 30 minutes or 35 minutes. So without a further ado, let's begin. So continuing with our ujjayi breath, let's tent our fingertips behind us and we'll start to open up the chest. So press the fingertips into the ground, slowly straighten the arms, broaden in the collarbones, taking a deep breath in, filling up the chest, maybe lifting the chin. As you exhale, just relax the fingers, bend the elbows and just sit down. Um, the sit bones don't actually lift off the ground, but we're relaxing them down. On your next inhale, let's come back up, inhaling, opening up the chest and exhale, relax. Let's do that one more time. Pressing into the fingers, feeling the inner arches or the finger arches uh, be engaged, <laughs> straightening out the arms, broadening the collarbones 
and then relax the hands down. So if, with your right hand, let's place the palm down and with your left hand, inhale, sweep it round and up, reaching up and back, maybe bringing your gaze along with the hand if your neck feels comfortable. And as you exhale, let's glide forwards, skimming the floor in front of you, then planting your left hand down and inhaling, reaching the right hand up and back. Exhale, skim the floor as if you're flying over the sea. <laughs> I don't know where that imagery is coming from. Inhaling, coming back, reaching back with the left hand, opening out the chest. Exhale, skim the floor, plant the left hand down, reach it up and back. Exhale, plant the right hand, inhale. And let's even it out on the left side. Inhale, and then we'll come back through center. So uh, we're gonna be on the middle of the mat and then turning towards, I guess, the top left corner of the mat. So the left shin should be, I think, more or less perpendicular to the top corner of the mat. And then we're gonna point the foot, so the foot is engaged, and bring the right knee up towards the right heel. So if you look down, your legs are, your shins are 90 at a 90 degree angle, kind of like a windmill just made out of your limbs. That's weird imagery. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be planting our hands behind us and then just switching the knees side to side, being super conscious of the knees. And if your knees are quite sensitive, you might want to either slow down the movement or just not have such a big range of movement or completely backing out if it does cause any pain. We want to be protecting our knees and not forcing anything. Okay, so we're gonna be knitting together the two motions of this and the reaching backwards, okay? So bringing our knees back through towards the left-hand side, pressing into the left hand and then reach the right hand up Lifting the hips, lifting the right hand up and back, maybe bringing the gaze along. The left hand is really supporting your upper chest at this moment, pressing into the tops of the feet. As you exhale, sit back down, gentle skim over the water as we switch the legs, planting the right hand down, pressing the tops of the feet into the ground, lifting the hips, reaching the left hand up and back, maybe gazing back, inflating as you exhale, coming round and over. So we'll be switching back and forth, making sure you're pressing into the tops of the shins, the tops of the feet to support the hips coming up, switching over. And then as you inhale, reaching the left hand up and back. Switching over. Kind of feels really good on the hips and also on the chest, switch. And this is, or I already feel, is kind of a wild thing variation, a grounded wild thing. The upper body is pretty much in the shape that a wild thing is usually seen in, or expressed as. And what we'll be working towards is just getting the legs to be in a stable position, straightened, one leg straightened and one leg bent. So let's do one more each side. Pressing up the hips, breathing into the upper body, reaching back and then let's circle around and back down. Let's meet in a tabletop position. So hands underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips, shins are parallel, coming into some cat cows, continuing to wake up the spine, pressing into those tops of the feet, inhaling, dropping the belly, pulling the chest through the arms, pressing into the hands, lifting the chin. As you exhale, chin into chest, doming the spine, belly button in, tailbone drops down. Inhale, coming into cow, dropping the belly, chest through the arms, exhale, chin into chest, arching the spine, belly in, 
relaxing the face. Inhale, dropping the belly, chest through, chin up. Exhale, coming into our cat. Pressing into the hands and then into a neutral position. Again, continuing to wake up the hands, let's come onto our right fingertips, pressing the fingertips into the ground, then left fingertips, shifting your shoulders over your fingers, and then left hand down, Ooh, right, right fingertips down, left fingertips down, right fingertips, left fingertips, right hand, left hand, right fingertips, left fingertips, right hand, left hand, right fingertips, left fingertips, right hand, left hand. Let's switch that, left fingertips, Right fingertips, left hand, right hand, right fingertips, left, left fingertips, right fingertips, left hand, right hand, left fingertips, right fingertips, left hand, right hand. One more time, left fingertips, right fingertips, left hand, right hand. Nice. Now let's do that with the elbows instead. So right elbow drops to where the right hand was, followed by the left, right hand, left hand, right elbow, left elbow. Right hand, left hand. One more time, right elbow, left elbow. Right hand, left hand. Switching, left elbow, right elbow. Left hand, right hand. Left elbow, right elbow. Left hand, right hand. Left elbow, right elbow. Left hand, right hand. Now, let's continue doing this, but with our legs up. So you can stay in this tabletop position or straighten out the legs coming into a plank. So adjust your plank as you need to. And then let's bring the left, the right elbow down, followed by the left, right hand, left hand, right elbow, left elbow, right hand, left hand, right elbow, left elbow, right hand, left hand. Switching, left elbow, right elbow, left hand, right hand, left elbow, right elbow, left hand, right hand, left elbow, right elbow. Left hand, right hand. Now let's drop the left elbow, followed by the right, coming into a forearm plank. Then dropping the knees, untucking the toes, lowering the hips down, coming into our sphinx. We're not relaxing into our sphinx, keeping it engaged, pressing into the tops of the feet, pressing the pubic bone into the ground. Forearms are pressing into the ground as well as we draw the shoulders back and pull the chest forwards feel as if this is kind of like you're pulling your chest through the arms as if you're in a cow position maybe lifting the chin steady breaths then that starts to press a little bit more into the top of the left foot then start to lift the right foot up off the ground an inch and then bring it up and over any amount over towards the left side coming into a twist Belly in, and let's come back. Press the top of the right foot into the ground, lifting the left foot up about an inch, pointing the foot, then lifting it up and over. Belly in as we twist over, maybe looking over towards your right shoulder, then coming back. One more each side. Press the foot, left foot into the ground, right foot comes up, up and over, and then back. Right foot down left foot comes up and over. So we're reaching up and over with the foot. Okay, so let's come up in back into our forearm plank, pressing into the forearms, curling the toes under, lifting the knees first, and then lifting the hips. Shoulders over wrists, and then bring your right hand underneath your face, legs together, I should have said that first. <laughs> and then we're gonna turn our feet so the outer edge of the right foot comes down, lifting the left hand up, coming into our forearm plank. So lift the hips, hips are facing towards the side of the mat, pressing into the right elbow, then start to lift the left leg up and turn it and plant it behind the right foot. So press that foot into the ground and you become really light on your hips and that will allow you to turn your right toes towards the back of the mat Then begin to reach the left hand up and over. So again, this is another wild thing, just on your forearms, lifting up the hips, opening up the chest, maybe looking at the left fingertips, taking a deep breath here. And then as you exhale, let's turn the right toes out, 
back to the side, coming into a forearm plank, plant the left forearm down, forearm plank, legs together, and we switch to the other side. So toes come out to the right side, left hand should come under the face first, I should have said that. Coming light on our right hand, right forearm, let's lift that hand up and overhead. Hips are facing to the side of the mat, lifting the hips ever so slightly higher. Start to lift the right leg up, plant it behind you. Then press that foot into the ground, lifting the hips, allowing the lightness of the hips to give you a chance to turn the left toes to the back of the mat. Then begin to reach the right fingertips back, maybe gazing at those fingertips as well. Breathing into the upper chest, making sure your elbow and your shoulder are stable. So this is very heavy on the shoulder. So if you need to ease off, please do. And then let's come back down, reaching the left right hand up, unturning the left toes, bring the feet together, planting the right hand down this time, pressing up into a full plank. So what we just did in forearm plank, we're doing in full plank. So legs together, turning onto the right outer edge of the right foot, pressing into the hand, side plank here. Okay, take a deep breath. Start to lift the hips a bit further up, turning the hips to the side, lift the left leg up and plant it behind you. Press that foot into the ground, turn the right toes towards the back and reaching the left hand up and over. Right hand is doing a brilliant job in supporting our upper body. Keep at it, pressing into all the finger pads, all the knuckles, taking a deep breath here, deep breath out. One more breath cycle, relaxing the jaw, relaxing the forehead. And then let's come back as we exhale, bringing the feet together, plant that left hand down. And let's switch to the other side. I realize my butt's gonna be facing you on this side, so I apologize. Let's come onto the outer edge of the left foot, coming light on the right hand, reaching the right hand up. From here, turn the hips to face the side, lifting the hips a little bit more than you normally would. Lift the right leg up, plant it behind you, allowing your left toes to point to the back. Pressing into the left hand, reaching the arm up and back. Taking a deep breath here, allowing your inhale to lift your chest even higher, reaching your right hand even further back, gazing at your fingertips or maybe on the ground for balance. One more breath. Enjoy this pose. As you exhale, let's come back down right foot onto left leg, coming into our plank. And then from our plank, let's lift our hips high and back into our first downward facing dog. All right, press into 10 knuckles, 10 fingertips, pedaling out the feet. Hmm. From here, let's inhale, ripple the body forwards, shoulders over wrists, and then bend the knees, and tuck in the toes coming into our hero's pose. So roll out the wrists, you can make stars, or use the thumbs to massage the forearms out. This is quite a heavy practice on the arms and the shoulders. So whenever you need to take breaks, know that you can come to this hero's pose or come to a child's pose, massage the forearms, massage the hands, make sure you're taking care of your body as much as you're exerting yourself, you should also be looking after yourself. Let's come back to our downward facing dog and we'll be coming into a three-legged dog wild thing flow and working towards an option of going into wheel as well. So loads of fun things coming. Coming into our plank first and from our plank, lift the hips, coming into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up towards the sky, toes are pointing down, hips are squared and then bend the knee and start to open out the hips. So open stacking the hips, knee is reaching up towards the sky, right shoulder is facing downwards, so we wanna lower it down as it tends to hike up as we lift the leg. 
And then from here, let's just lower the foot down. Inhaling, rippling the body forwards. As you exhale, bend the knees and send your hips back and up, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Toes are pointing down, hips are squared. As you exhale, bend the knee, open up the hips, open stack. Left shoulder tends to lift up, so we wanna bring it down, allowing it to face downwards. Inhale here, exhale, downward facing dog, lowering that leg. Inhale, ripple the body forwards. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. As you exhale, bring the right knee towards the right shoulder, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, three-legged dog, toes pointing down. As you exhale, knee towards nose, crunching the knee in, in towards the chest, pressing into the hands. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, crunching and twisting. Inhale, three-legged dog and start to bend the knee and reach the knee further higher. Shifting forwards and then bending the left knee, bringing the right foot down to the ground, turning the toe, the left toes out and unraveling, pressing into the right hand, the left hand, I should say, reaching the right hand up and forwards, coming into our wild thing. Take a deep breath here. We've been here before. As you exhale, let's undo this by turning our chest down, planting the right foot, lifting the right leg up, and coming back into a downward facing dog. So that didn't feel as elegant for me. Let's try it again on the other side. Inhale, lifting our left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee, left shoulder, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee over towards the right elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. And then start to open stack the hips, bending the knee, shifting forwards, and then slowly coming light onto our left fingertips, planting that left foot down turning the back toes to point towards the back of the mat, then reaching the left hand up and overhead. Wild thing, pressing into the right hand. Say good job to your right hand for supporting you so well. Inhale here. As we exhale, let's turn our chest back down to the ground, lifting the left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog, and then coming down into downward facing dog. So let's do that flow one more time with the option of coming into wheel. Don't worry if you don't have wheel in the practice. Just watch and maybe try. If you don't have wheel, I should say, if you don't have wheel in your practice, maybe not try it this time and um, practice wheel first and be really confident in coming in and out of wheel. So inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right shoulder. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee into chest, knee towards nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to right, knee to left elbow. Keep getting my lefts and rights wrong. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, open stack the hips, shifting forwards and then bending the left knee as we lower the right foot down, turning the left toes out, unraveling, reaching the chest up and overhead. And then maybe for the wheel option, looking down, planting the right hand down, and then flipping the left fingers behind us, maybe walking our feet closer to shorten our stance. Thighs are squeezing towards each other, pressing the chest forwards, opening out the shoulders, gazing down. Now to come out of it is a different thing. So let's shift a little bit more over towards the right hand, turning the left hand down, pressing that hand into the ground. And as you turn 
Let's left, turn the chest round, lift the right leg up, and coming down into a downward facing dog. So the action of shifting over towards the right hand and coming light onto the left hand to be able to flip the fingers. So then they're pointing back towards the front of the mat. And with that hand stable on the ground, that allows us to unravel out of our wheel, out of our wild thing, and coming into a downward facing dog. Easier said than done. Let's come to our other side now. So complete your exhale here. Inhale, lift the left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, left knee, left shoulder or elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. You're doing great, let's keep going. Left knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, relaxing the jaw, relaxing the face. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, open, stack the hips. Shifting forwards, okay, and then bending the right knee, planting the left foot down, turning the toes to point towards the back of the leg. Straightening that right leg, keeping the left leg bent, reaching the left hand forwards, pressing into the right hand, lifting the chest on your inhales, and then maybe continuing to look down, planting the right left hand down, flipping the right fingertips. So the fingers are pointing towards the heels, pressing into the hands, elbows are coming in, broadening the chest, Chest is coming forwards, inner thighs are squeezing towards each other. And to come out of it, let's lean over towards the left, looking down, flipping the right hand, pressing that hand into the ground, allowing yourself to unravel. Coming into a three-legged dog, and then downward facing dog. Lowering the knees down to the ground, and tucking the toes, coming back to our heroes. So if you've never tried that transition before, then I hope you had fun giving it a crack. It takes practice, really, like I've tried that many a times to even get to that stumbling stage. So be patient with yourself and be content with just trying and be con being content with your practice today. So let's start to cool down, maybe rolling out the wrists if you're not doing that already. Now let's come into a table and we'll be massaging out the forearm so this is probably one of my favorite things to do if i've got really tight or worked on my forearms a lot so i'm going to use my plant my left forearm actually i'm going to flip so you guys can see so i'm going to use either my forearm to rub along my right forearm or even use my knuckles to massage my right forearm and my hand, maybe moving up to the hands. You can even use your elbows if you want. Now the ultimate mush machine is use your left hand to support you and bring your knees forward and use your left knee to massage up and down the forearm and feel that really doing some good work there feels really nice all right let's switch so bring the knee back and lower the left forearm down or switching whichever arm you tried so you can use your right forearm to massage that's the larger surface area and we're relaxing the left hand and left arm and forearm so we're just allowing the other arm to mush it and there's no need for any gripping with the left hand you can even use your knuckles i'll just try whichever part of the body works best maybe just a combination of all of them is the best thing for today pressing into the base of the thumbs the knuckles and then if you want to try this press your right hand down to support you and then bring your knees closer towards your left forearm right knee mushes your forearm should feel really really nice 
All right, let's finish up here. And then coming back to our table, crossing the shins and bringing our feet out in front of us. So we've come into some back bends and a good way to neutralize back bends is to do some twists. So left foot forwards, we're bending the right knee and bringing the right foot onto the inner thigh or onto the calf. So whichever works best for you, just try not to press against the knee. So, so left thigh is pressing into the right foot, right foot is pressing into the thigh. Let's turn towards the right knee, coming into a gentle twist first, finger pads are on the ground. Taking a deep breath here, lengthening the spine from the base to the crown of the head. And then bring your left hand onto your right knee, reach your right hand up and over, drawing a big arch, and we begin leaning over towards the left foot, the left leg. Okay, left leg is engaged, heel is pressing forwards, left hip is pulling back. Taking a couple breaths, cooling down the body, inhaling, coming back, turning forwards and switching. So right foot forwards, heel presses down, foot is pressing forwards. Left foot comes onto the right inner thigh or the calf. Then turning towards the left knee, fingertips down, taking a breath to lengthen the spine up. And then right leg, right hand onto left knee. Right left hand draws an arch up and over, reaching, coming into a twist and a side stretch, relaxing the face. If, you, if it's available for you, you can reach the left, the right foot, but that's not really a requirement. But if it's available to you, then you can do that as well. So open out the chest towards the sky. One more breath. And then exhale, coming back and twisting, bringing both feet out in front of us, coming into a seated forward fold. So if you need to bend your knees, to bring your belly onto your thighs. I'd really rather you do that rather than just forcing a forward fold. The heels are pressing into the ground. The toes are flexed. Toes are coming back towards you. And we're coming forwards. So bringing your hands onto the ground or wherever you can reach onto your legs. Coming forwards as much as we're going down and we're hinging from the hips rather than the low back. We want to protect our lower back. It's quite a vulnerable part of the spine where we tend to dump a bit of weight. So I'd rather you bend your knees to allow this hinge and slowly straighten your legs over time. Relax in the face and allow your head to relax down. So maybe even sway your neck side to side, releasing any tension in the upper body and allowing the lower body to relax. Her forward folds are really good for counter doing, counter doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, but counter is a good counter pose for back bends. So twists are good for neutralizing the spine and forward folds counter pose, counterbalance the back bends and vice versa. So this was a swift practice. If you feel like you need anything else before Shavasana, please pause the video and take it. Otherwise, we'll be transitioning into Shavasana after the next breath cycle. This was a swift practice, so well done guys for sticking along with it. Let's inhale, lift back up into a seat and then reaching your arms forward as slow as you can lower the low back mid back and upper back down broadening the collarbones allowing the feet to splay out arms alongside the body palms facing up and completing your exhale through the mouth inhaling Exhale through the mouth. 
relax all control of the breath, allow the body to just melt into the mat. Watching the breath as it returns to its natural rhythm. And allowing any thoughts that come through to pass on, reminding yourself to continue to watch the breath. Maybe feeling where the belly rises and falls, or the ribs expanding and contracting. I recommend staying here for at least another three to five minutes. Otherwise, you can start to close the practice with me by introducing some movement back into the fingers and the toes, keeping the eyes closed. Maybe swaying your head side to side, rolling out the wrists, rolling out the ankles. Then bending the knees into the chest, rolling off onto your right side, pausing for a moment here. Use the left hand to press it into the ground, coming up right and bringing ourselves to a comfortable seat. So bring your hands together, thumbs up the heart. Bow your chin towards your chest and being content with how far you've come in today's practice. Being proud of yourself for following through, working optimally and trying your best. Slowly opening your eyes, relaxing the hands down. Thank you so much for practicing today. I hope you had fun doing this wild thing. It's a very liberating pose. So there's more things coming and I hope to see you very soon. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Namaste.